So exactly two years and seven days ago, an idea was born to build a coolest local film studio and slowly but surely that idea formed into reality and exactly one year later, we opened that studio. Little did we know back then how much work, stress and sacrifice is waiting for us. So as a filmmaker, I always had this entrepreneurial mindset and I always wanted to build businesses and just somehow make them extremely profitable. But I didn't want to just start dropshipping or another random online business just to make money. Pretty early on I decided that I only want to build businesses around filmmaking and around things that I actually enjoy doing. So when the opportunity presented itself, I grabbed it by the balls and exactly one year later I built my own film studio. It started back in August 2020 when me and my friend decided to start this project. Back then I was shooting a bunch of commercials and social media content and he already had a pretty successful phone case manufacturing company and I was also shooting a bunch of videos for him. Long story short, we met a couple of times, started creating a business plan, calculating numbers, profit margins, everything, and pretty quickly we realized that this idea can actually work. After that we agreed upon the terms, it was a 50-50 business, he provided the majority of the funding, I provided the majority of the work, and yeah, we immediately started working on this project. And the first step in this process was the branding. It took me about a month to come up with the name, logo, and the whole meaning behind the studio. Uh, at the end I named it World Studios, and the whole idea behind it is that we also wanted to do a gear rental section, and I wanted to build out this studio around the gear cage. Once the name and the branding was done, I immediately started working on the logo and I failed pretty fast since I'm not a graphics designer. So I hired one and he was able to make my idea come to life in an amazing logo. At this point it was already around December, so before Christmas I sat down with Kevin, my business partner, to create the company, sign all the papers and just make it into an official business. I just arrived to the place where we are signing the official papers and contracts. I'm meeting coming upstairs and yeah, hopefully in an hour I will be the CEO of my brand new very first company. Um, so yeah, exciting stuff. From the January of 2021, I had two really important things to do. Build a website and also find a physical location for the studio because we still didn't have a fixed place. With the website, I built out the layout and then pretty quickly realized that I'm not good enough with CSS and JavaScript to finish the whole thing. So I found a guy who's really good with this and he was able to help me to finish the whole site. We used Squarespace to create the website, but we also used a bunch of third-party plugins to create the whole backend part. So the website was looking pretty good but we still didn't have any physical location. From the very beginning I was always looking at warehouse listings but there were only a very few that could actually work. In the next couple of weeks I visited around four to five of them and one of them was pretty good but still far from perfect. At around April we were very close to signing the best warehouse from that five I visited but then something really interesting happened. Kevin was already renting a warehouse at a pretty good place and they just decided to separate the office from the production line and it was the perfect opportunity to take over that warehouse. At this point we had the warehouse, the official move out and move in dates and it was finally time to create the layout for the studio. The whole place was 15 meters wide and 36 meters long with a ceiling height of 6 to 7.5 meters. I knew from the beginning that I wanted to do multiple studios in this place and not just one giant one. So in the end I decided to go with four studios, three studios inside and one outside. As I said before the previous company left a bunch of stuff there including a giant 12 by 15 meter gallery module which I definitely wanted to keep and keep the layout of it. At the top it was a perfect place to build out two dressing rooms, a small kitchen area, a small office area and we still had a pretty big place for people to just stay there or sit down when bigger shoots come to us. And also since I wanted to take out all the walls it was a perfect place to just look down on the main studio and inspect everything from the top. At the bottom of the gallery module I decided to put two more studios, one 6 meter wide and 15 meter long with some paper backdrops at the end. This would be perfect for product videos or product photos. Another smaller one which would be 3 meters wide and 6 meters long for music videos and besides these we still had a bunch of space left so I decided to put two more storage rooms in where we can store like set pieces and any kind of stuff and besides this we still had enough space to put our gear cage in but we obviously still needed to build that one out. For the outside studio I just wanted to rent out 20 foot shipping container and put it in the parking lot. 
I thought it would be really cool for music videos and at night we could put our Astra Titan tubes on the walls with some magnetic mounts. To be honest, it wasn't my original idea, many people did this before. Uh, back then it was really popular in the US and especially in some LA studios uh, for the music videos to do these kind of sets. So yeah, I just stole the idea from them because we didn't have anything similar like this in Hungary. Once the layout was finished, it was time to order all the gear. Uh, at the end we decided to only rent out uh, lighting gear, grip and rigging stuff and also a couple effect machines. Alright, so um, today is the 1st of June and I'm about to spend probably over 30,000 euros in the next couple of hours. So let's do the big ones first. Here's an invoice for 19,980 euros and uh, 57 cents. Consider this one paid. Here's another one for 3,455 euros. Here's another one that's coming from Sweden, an order for 5,400 euros. Um, let's pay this one as well. I think these were the major orders. Uh, I still need to place a couple of smaller ones, a couple hundred euros here and there. And I'm also ordering some stuff from Hungary, so I need to do those as well. But after that, I'm done and I officially spent over 30,000 euros in what like the last 45 minutes. So I wanted to go with LED lights only, since they are the future of filmmaking and also mainly we wanted to target low to mid-budget productions. So I ordered a total of 8 lights from Aperture to 120D Mark IIs to 300Xs to 600Ds and to P300C Nova panels. I also bought a set of Astra Titan tubes, a couple uh, Nanlite tubes as well, an Aperture MC kit, an Aperture B7C light bulb kit, also some uh, Nanlite 26Cs, and also a bunch of uh, C stands, light stands, uh, boom stands, extension cables, and sandbags as well. I also ordered a couple of effect machines, a smoke machine, a snow machine, two fire machines, and the bubble machine as well. These were kind of the main things, but there were also obviously a couple of smaller things here and there. By the way, if you're interested in the unboxing of all this gear, I made a video about it. There's a link in the description and there's also probably a card popping up somewhere right here, which will lead you to that video. I was stressing a little bit on the shipping times, but at the end, everything thankfully arrived on time. Okay, then, then. I'll call my location. Hello. 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 All right, so the delivery guy just called me and the package is here, so let's get it. So we said that he couldn't park in front of the door just behind the whole house, which might be a bit tricky because uh, the whole package weighs around 110 kilograms. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Oh, there he is. Hello. Getting this package inside the house was probably easier than I thought, but I'm definitely not putting this inside of an elevator. So yeah, I will need to chop this whole thing up and bring it up in pieces. And obviously chopping up the whole package into individual items, and not the individual items into pieces, because that would be silly. So I wanted to buy a pocket knife for the longest time, but I never did, so I'm just gonna use my car key for this one. Alright, so as you guys can see, I managed to bring up the whole package in one round, and I don't know if it's the best or the worst thing, but this is probably only about 40% of all the stuff that I ordered. So in the first week of June, construction officially started, but in the first two weeks it was more like deconstruction than construction. We had to knock down a bunch of drivers, uh, throw out a lot of trash, and also completely take apart some metal structures. And in this time we also pulled in some new electrical cables, which allowed us to upgrade from uh, 3 times 16 amps to 3 times uh, 32 amps and 3 times 25 amps. 
which wasn't a lot, but still, it was a lot better. So as you guys can see, we made a pretty good progress with knocking down the drywalls. There's still a bunch of trash around here. I think we already filled two containers and the third one is coming tomorrow morning. So I'm probably gonna stay here all night. Uh, but yeah, tomorrow is a pretty interesting day because we're officially starting the big construction work and we're gonna knock down all these walls, the whole gallery, the stairs and everything. And we will open four units together, which will create a giant, I think over 360 square meter space. Exactly three days and a couple hours later. So by opening all the units together, you guys can now actually see how this studio will actually look like. Um, so yeah, let me show you guys quickly around. So first of all, this big space where we opened four units together will be our main stage, stage one, the big studio, which will be around 360 square meters with a ceiling height of six meters and 7.5 meters. And we will have smaller studios as well. So we have this whole gallery uh, with the upstairs space. In the downstairs space, we're gonna have our storage room, two smaller studios there, a little bit bigger one here, and the bigger one back there, which is almost uh, just by itself, 100 square meters. And if we go upstairs, we will have our little bit of office space here. We're gonna have some desks there, just to just sit around and everything. We will have a kitchen there, and we're gonna actually have two locker rooms. Uh, one for the big studio and one for the second biggest studio and as you see there's no walls here So yeah, um, this is where we at right now uh, I think progress will be a lot more visual from from this point on But yeah, I'm really really excited about this space and how it's going to turn out After the first two weeks the real construction began We started off with the biggest driver in the studio which was around 100 square meters We wanted to create a natural background at the end of the main studio and we also needed the space to hide some of the sandwich panels separating walls. We decided to paint the wall first black, but the idea was that productions can repaint this wall many, many times. Besides the big wall, we also had a bunch of smaller dry walls at the other side of the studio. These took another two weeks to finish. After the fourth week, most of the drivers were done with painting and everything, and it was time to start the metalworks. This took us around two weeks because we had to build a completely new staircase, a new railing for the upstairs space, and also some components for the gear cage. Fortunately, during this week, we were also able to finish all the AC work, which meant cleaning them, replacing some of the AC units, and also some electrical work to power these units. By the end of July, we were able to finish all the major construction work and it was time to furnish the whole place and bring in all the gear. All right, so as you guys can see, the whole studio is finished right now, at least the construction side of it. All the walls are painted, all the doors are in, and now I just have to furnish the whole space, which will I start by putting together these shelves. They will go into the vault and we will basically store all our gear on them. Planning to do a pretty cool RGB LED setup behind the shelves that will light up the whole space. But before that, I have to put together the shelves, which will definitely take me a solid three to four hours. So yeah, let's get started on these. In the next couple of days, I brought in all the gear from home, unboxed them, built out the gear cage with this shelf system, and I also used a bunch of LED strips. So yesterday, I stayed at the studio till around 4 a.m. to unbox all the gear and actually load up the vault. And tonight, I'm here again, because uh, I still need to organize everything and sticker up all the gear. I'm hoping I will finish a bit earlier than, than yesterday, because I really need to get some sleep in. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. I I was really lucky this morning because I received all the missing packages, which means I can finally finish the whole world. I already put together these film card looking things. I originally wanted to buy like proper film cards, but they're a bit expensive and uh, yeah, money is tight. Uh, so yeah, the film cards or the film card looking things are together. My plan is to screw up six of these uh, black boards to the wall and mount the giant flat sign to it and hopefully it will look amazing. So I managed to put up the LED sign and it looks pretty amazing. Uh, it's crazy that I envisioned this exact setup with the LED sign, the blackboard and the film cards for at least the past six to nine months. And it looks identical uh, to that. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty crazy moment. On the last couple of days, my dad helped me out with furnishing the whole upstairs place, assembling all the chairs, tables, shelves and everything. And after that, the studio was kind of finished, but there was still a lot of work that needed to be done. 
I spent the next week taking a bunch of photos, uploading them to the website, creating a promo video, some Facebook ads, and ultimately launching the whole marketing campaign. So I just finished shooting all the product shots for the website. Uh, today is officially day four of me just staying in the studio till uh, 3, 4, 5 a.m. in the morning. Uh, right now it's, uh, yeah, it's 4.07 in the morning. I'm probably gonna just stay here, sleep on the couch and go home in the morning. And when I get home, I will need to start adding these photos immediately and just load them up to the website because the website has to be ready by tomorrow evening. Because technically after that, we still have two more days to the official launch, but I just won't have time to, to focus on the website. Uh, so yeah, it will be an eventful 24 hours. We finally launched the studio around the 7th of August. Uh, we launched all the social media sites, the website, uh, some email marketing, some Facebook ads, and also a couple of promotional posts in Facebook groups. We were able to reach a lot of people in the first couple of weeks because the market, the filmmaking industry in Hungary is pretty small. We got a lot of positive feedback and also some bookings started to come in. In August, we had a total of three bookings, which sounds bad, but we were actually calculating with similar numbers because August is a really slow month and everyone is just on vacation. In September things started to ramp up a little bit. We had a total of seven bookings, mostly music videos and smaller commercials. And we also started speaking with some bigger production companies, which was really exciting. In October we had around 10 bookings, but one of them was a pretty big commercial. That one commercial alone was a seven day booking period, with five days went into set building, uh, one day of shooting and one day of just demolishing everything. And besides this, it was pretty similar music videos and smaller commercials. In November, we had around the same number of bookings. We spent a lot more on ads and we also started to reach out to big production companies. It was surprisingly hard to reach most of them, but more on this later. November was also the month that we started to experience the effects of COVID and we had a total of five bookings cancelled due to this. Also, this was the month when we started getting emails with plans for three to four months long booking period for giant productions, but unfortunately none of them came true. In December we had some success with the November Facebook ads and we managed to attract some new customers. Uh, we had a total of around 9 to 10 bookings and got around 3 to 4 cancelled due to COVID. Also uh, one of the productions was a bigger one with a 5 day period and we actually built the set for this production. So in the past couple of months we were slowly getting more and more bookings. We had a lot of positive reviews, everyone loved the place. So we knew that we had a winning product, just needed to get more bookings. At this point we we were barely breaking even and there's a pretty big reason behind this that I haven't told you about yet. So back in September our landlord actually raised our rent by 25% and also our electricity bill by around like 60 to 70% which, which really made things harder but we couldn't do anything about it. It was still a great business, we just needed to get more and more bookings. In January we had around 7 bookings but one of them was a 2 week long project. It was a YouTube series with a bunch of influencers, challenges, everything and they built a pretty big set. Financially, this was a good month for us, but our landlord again came forward and raised our rent by 8% and our electricity bill by 2x. Since it was the middle of the winter and we were using AC units for heating, this made a really nice bump on our electricity bill. In February, nothing really changed. We had around the same number of bookings, just with no two week long project. Uh, we also started to get a couple more emails with like one, two, three month long projects from big production companies. But again, unfortunately, none of them came through at the end. At the end of February, I went to Norway with Xiaomi to shoot a commercial for them. And on our last day there, uh, Russia finally attacked Ukraine. Since I live in Hungary and we are right next to Ukraine, uh, everyone just panicked, went into survival mode and our bookings really suffered from it. March was a pretty slow month and at this point we tried every single marketing channel uh, except one. Back in October and November we reached out to a bunch of production companies, first via Instagram, then Facebook, then email, then phone. But even then we only managed to get any type of response 
back from around 30% of them. So in March we decided to try one more thing. I prepared some physical gifts with some letters in them to the company's CEO and the physical gifts were basically like clapperboards with some message on it and also a letter next to it. After sending these out we got a response from around 50% of them and in April and May we managed to land some projects from these outreaches. But still things weren't going super well since the war broke out, our bookings decreased noticeably and we just knew that we can't keep going on like this for too long. The last drop in the glass was when our landlord came forward with a letter again saying that our electricity bill were 5x uh, starting the next month. Uh, and this would mean us that if we want to run all our AC units just for one day, uh, that would cost us around like 200, 250 bucks. And then at that point we haven't even plugged in one light. At this point we had basically two choices. Either risk it, keep going and hope that the giant production will book us for at least a two to three months period or close the studio, cut our losses and just try to recover from that as fast as we can. Besides the war, we were also heading into a massive recession and also the Hungarian foreign uh, was just declining like crazy. So as you probably saw from the title, at the end we went with the second option to close the studio as soon as possible. It was a really hard decision to destroy something that we've been working for really hard the past two years, but, but we had to do it. Funny enough, but what took us a year of planning and two months of construction, we just destroyed it in less than two weeks. In these two weeks, we tried to sell as many things as possible. We actually managed to sell all the furniture and all the AC units and some other things as well. And I was also in the studio day and night helping the construction team to finish everything. After we broke down everything, it was time to empty out the whole place and put back the original separating walls. We threw out a lot of trash and put the rest of the stuff on pallets for a truck to take them to another warehouse. After that, I just needed to clean the whole place before we could give it back. Thankfully, there were already people waiting in the line for these warehouses, so it was really easy for us to just find a new tenant. So yeah, uh, that's the end of this story. Uh, since the studio closed, now I have a bunch more free time to create these videos and yeah there's a bunch more videos in production right now uh, so yeah I will see you guys in the next one really soon bye I guess that's it.